Well, hello everyone. This is Robin Carter. I am an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator out of Flower Mound, Texas, and welcome to my YouTube channel. Let me thank those of you who have subscribed to my channel, and if you're brand new, um, please consider subscribing to my channel. Today's video, I'm going to be sharing my second part of my Garden Meadow Mega Class. Now, the reason I've called it a Mega Class is because we will create 24 cards in total. If you missed my first video, we created six, and I will put a link to it in the description box of this video. So just go to the description and hit more, and there'll be a whole list of information regarding this class and links to uh, my favorite things as well. So I'll explain my favorite things as we get to them. So today we're gonna to start creating again. And if you purchase this bundle from me, then you will receive the PDF of all the instructions for this class. I've included a picture of the uh, sheet of DSP that we will be working with, as well as the alternative cards. So we're gonna be making a couple cards from each different pattern of the Meandering Meadows DSP, which is a coordinating product with this uh, Garden Meadow Suite. I've tried to limit the supplies but this suite does not include uh, label dies, so I will be adding label dies to that as well. So let's get started. So I have my first sheet of DSP that we're going to work with is this. Now, this is one of the things that I call my favorite things, and it's a 5x7 little Velcro envelope. And I keep the components for all my cards in those as I do videos and just helps me organize things as we go along. So with this sheet of paper, we're going to create three cards. Now, I know I said I was going to limit, but I did bring in my favorite, favorite uh, die set of all uh, is the scalloped contour dies. And those are right here. And here's just a tip for organizing. You probably saw my other one. I always, well, I keep it in the sleeve that Stampin' Up! sells it in, and then I put the a uh, label here with the name that's bigger. And then rather than having to look for the tiny amount of dies, I write on this sheet how many dies are in this set so that when I get ready to put them away, I can count and make sure they are all there. Um, I do use a strong magnet and those magnets are part of my favorite things and, and there is a link to those. Speaking of my links, I have to mention I am an Amazon affiliate, so when you use those links to purchase any products, I get a few pennies back at no cost to you just for recommending those products to you. So if you've used those in the past or plan on using those, thank you for uh, using those links. Okay, so here is what we're going to use. We're going to be making, uh, well, I've already pre-cut a lot of stuff because this, these videos are going to take a while to do. So. I decided to use Berry Vanilla for this class. I think it um, makes it very classy and kind of dresses it up a little bit. So I have already pre-die cut some fresh freesia with the second largest scallop contour die in this one. So this die right here, they kind of all connect together. So I've already pre-done that and then I have pre-done a I think this is four and one eighth. Actually, it's a whole panel. So it's four and a quarter by five and a half of balmy blue with the distressed brick embossing folder. Now I am I have only added two embossing folders to this class. So uh, I did share a tip when using the distressed brick. If you want your brick to be raised and your mortar in, you want to run your DSP upside down. Or, not DSP, your card stock upside down. Now it doesn't matter on this sheet because it's a solid sheet, but like when we cut the window, you'll wanna make sure the stitching is uh, on the direction you want it. So just wanted to point that out again. So let's get started. I'm gonna cut this DSP so that it fits within this window. And to do that, so I have in here, measurements to help me remember if I don't have to measure it every time. It wasn't sticking out up front. I have a little sticky note in here because I use this die a lot so I wanted to know what size the inside mat should be for the second largest 
and it's three and seven eighths tall. So let's cut that right now. Let me get out my trimmer. I did share trimmer basics last time in case you missed it, but I will share again. Whenever you cut, you always want to press your blade towards whichever direction you have the paper anchored upon this um, solid piece right here. So if it's here, you want to cut up. If it's down here, you want to cut down. So for this card, I'm going to cut this way because I'm going to use this piece for another card. So let's cut this at, double check my mesh, three and seven eighths inch tall. Okay, and then the width is like two and five eighths. It's a little bit bigger than that. It's kind of between the nine sixteenth and the five eighths. So let's, let's just double check that because I've, I've I keep wanting to get it perfect and it's just, it's kind of from dot to dot, it's at a 16th. So, and from dot to dot, that one was pretty much four. So I've cut off an eight. So it is really nine sixteenths. So let's do nine sixteenths again. Now the sixteenths is the smallest dot on your ruler. I know that. Okay, and so that's going to fit here. Still not quite wide enough. And then we're going to cut another one. Let's do this one, the 5 eighths, and see how it does. You can always cut it smaller. Okay, I do like 5 eighths better, and I've been contemplating that, so I'm going to mark on my sheet that it is five eighths for sure and not the nine sixteenths so now i don't have to measure that anymore <laughs> okay you can keep this scrap to use for sentiments or something like that um, i just have a little velcro sheet that i keep all my scraps in in case i use them later like i said we will keep the bigger piece that we cut off earlier for another card so let's get started putting these together also, to save on time, I have pre-die cut and colored a lot of the elements I'm going to put on the cards because I have 24 cards to get through, and I'm hoping not to have too many classes with this. So let's get started with these, with the scallops. I think we can do those at the same time because it's the same idea. So I have also pre-dry embossed two very vanilla pieces with the Distressed Tile 3D Embossing Folder. Now that was new in the mini catalog from September to December, and I love the detail that it adds to your cards. Um, just simple embossing will always make your cards look a little more elegant. So consider if you are, if you have a die cut machine and you haven't really started embossing the embossing folders are relatively cheap, like $10 a piece or so. Some are a little less, some are a little more, and it really adds a lot of detail to your cards. So let's adhere this DSP to my two pieces of fresh freesia. I can't get away from the dots. I, I think that this paper, the only paper I've ever had problems with that are the gold, um, cards and envelopes that we had, it would show the little dots of glue. So I've, I've figured out that on everything else, it works out okay. Okay, and this is my multi-purpose uh, liquid glue that I love to work with because it gives me some wiggle room to make sure I get stuff centered on the cards. So there are our two pretty pieces. And I'm going to get up my very vanilla card, thick card base, and let's adhere the distressed tile layer on top of it. I know some people may like to just go ahead and emboss the front of their card. I don't really care to do that because I want the inside of my card to be smooth. So since this is a full panel, I'm going to tap it on my desk at the spine and then at the bottom. And so if any hangs off, I can always trim it later off the edge. 
in case it's a hair bigger. Okay, let's do the other one. These are going to be just the same design. I'm making sure. <laughs> so I have some pre-made and I did them on white. And I wasn't a huge fan. Uh, so I switched to vanilla and I, I like this color much better with this DSP. It just gives it a softer, I think, a little bit more elegant look. And I appreciate those of you who have commented already saying they really like the vanilla. Thank you so much for watching and your comments. I do read all the comments and try to reply. And I like to know about what region you are watching from, maybe state, city, or country. <laughs> Since this is not a paper pumpkin exclusive to North America, um, hopefully I'm getting some people from abroad. Okay, so there is that. Now, all I did for these is put them up on dimensionals. But um, also, well, let's do this first before we put it on dimensionals so we can press well. So I liked the look of a fence, and I think I put it on this one because there's a little path. So I've pre-die cut this fence from the Garden Meadows. And one tip I shared last time is this is probably best to use with adhesive sheets. However, if you're running low, you can put some tear and tape on the back of your cardstock and get just enough on there to have some adhesive on your die cuts. So that's what I did here to kind of show you. Now, obviously, it's going to tear off in a couple pieces, but um, that gives you an idea of how I use my tear and tape like an adhesive sheet. So let's put that here on the bottom. There must not have been any right here. So let's put a little bit on the edge of the fence. If that's big enough that it'll hold some glue. And it's a little crooked. I should have paid more attention. Okay, that is better. So then, like I said, I have some pre-colored elements that I've used in this card. So I wanted to put a little... On this one, I just put a branch, or not a branch, <laughs> a flower. And I'm, I'm guessing that it kind of looks like lavender since we've gotten the lavender kit from the paper pumpkin. So I'm going to adhere that right there. So let's go ahead and put this up on dimensionals. And dimensionals are over here. Okay, I always share that I cut my dimensionals in half. The large ones anyway. I don't cut the small ones. They're small enough <laughs> to start with. I'm going to have to cut another row here in a second. Okay, and then that whole thing cut off. I'm going to put two I cry here to support the center. Let's go ahead and put these on this one as well while we're working. Two more. Two more. Okay. Press to make sure those are on and then we can take off the sheets. Now, I want to make sure I get the right one correct. Now, in this one, let me dig in my bucket here. I should have a piece of DSP. Left from last time. So let me find that real quick. Okay, so I've located it. So um, my last class, when we created this card, we had a little strip left over from the back of this cardstock. And so I thought I would put it to use on this card since it has that little bit of fresh freesia in there. So let me set this aside. I have little stacks of the individual paper from that class. So I thought I would just use this as a banner on the side. And when looking at this, I thought it would be real pretty on this one since it's not a whole lot of detail. 
So let's cut this to five and a half. Trim her out. Now you could just, you know what, maybe I'll just glue it on here and then trim it off with my scissors. That way it's exactly that length. Picking my side cards over here just to make sure I'm not forgetting anything. So let's put this on here. And I've already taken my dimensional off, so my label is sticking to my wrist. All right, so let's just put this right here on the edge. Give that a second to dry. And on this other one, I didn't use anything because I have the fence and everything. So we'll just go ahead and peer this down while this Tombow multi-purpose glue dries a little bit. I like it because it gives you wiggle room and it, it does dry pretty quick. So let's just eyeball that in the center. And if I lost some of the glue, if, like if you take off your dimensionals and then you touch some things, you might want to put some glue on there just so it sticks. All right, so let's put this down here. And then I can open up my card, take my scissors, and trim that off. That way it's even with that. Now this scrap is not big enough to save, so you can just ditch that one. I think we've used the most out of that DSP. Okay, and then I did uh, want to add this little piece of flower. right here on the edge. Okay, and then we need our sentiment. So I, a couple of my favorite dies are the All That dies. Any dies that just have a bunch of labels in them. So that's what I brought in here to create these two. And I've shared those in multiple videos. Um, so I'm not gonna get them out for you today, but this is the die from the All That dies. And on my blog, I'll have a list of all the supplies used as well. When I, when I do my blog, blog post at the end of this whole series so I can share all the um, pictures. Okay, so this is from the stamp set. I've tried to use all the sentiments except for a few uh, from the stamp set. So let me get out my Memento ink. I think... Uh, Black sentiments are what I usually uh, put on here. Again, it's just a classic look as well. Sometimes I'll use a coordinating color if it's a dark color for sentiments. I used Mossy Meadow on the previous ones. Get some glue on my hands are sticky. Okay, so let's put this up here. Actually, I didn't do that. <clears throat> I did something else. So we're <laughs> I'm looking at my cards to see what did I change? Because I've changed uh, as I design them, I come up with something better. So we will save this one for another card. Now on my previous one, <clears throat> I'll, I'll go ahead and show you because I decided I did not like the crushed curry. So this is my first one on white for this card. And I didn't really care for the crushed curry, so I changed it to fresh freesia to match this paper. I was going with the crushed curry to match the flowers, but I think I like this look better. I should have a pre-done fence. Okay, I am back, and here is my pre-colored and die-cut fence. Now, my favorite fence is the one that has the detail through because you can show through it, but I wanted to show you an idea with this fence in case you wanted to use it. So what I've done here is I have it where you can kind of open it. Now, I didn't pre-score the sides, and I think I'm gonna do that for this one to help it open up better. So let me get my trimmer out and move this. Aside, and I'm just going to put it right here in the groove where like the hinges are and not use my cutting blade, <laughs> use the light 
gray blade. This is pouring blade. I can see me cutting it. All right, and the same thing on this side. Okay, put that away and see how the fence opens now. So um, you also need to cut it in the center, obviously, so you can open it. Okay, and now that I've scored it, it has a better opening way. So let's put that on the card. And let's eye where it should go. We could do it like that and then glue the sides down. I need an assistant here, I've decided, because <laughs> I set stuff. I got everything ready last night. I need to quit doing it at night because then I, I guess I didn't have everything ready. But I have a missing fence somewhere because I know I colored it. So I just made another one real quick. Okay, so there is our fence that opens up. I'm not going to pull it to open it yet because it could um, not be glued down yet. Now for the sentiment, I'm going to use, like I did on this yellow one, the happy birthday. So um, I keep all the little scraps from our cutting it like five and a quarter or whatnot and use those. I think it gives it a little neat effect. So um, as soon as I find my little scrap pile, here it is. I've just stuck them all in one of my little organized things. And let's find one we like. I think I like that okay. We're gonna use the dark orange side. I guess it's not orange, but I think I'll use that side. And let me get my little mat here and my happy birthday stamp. My momento black ink. And I'm gonna wish me luck. Okay, I did pretty good. So I'm going to manually cut this and flag it. So I'm just going to get some scissors. I've got multiple scissors here, don't I? These are my sharper ones. Actually, my snips are the sharpest, but I just didn't get those out today. Okay, to manually flag it, I cut it in the center here. And then I cut corner to that center cut mark. And it generally works out pretty good. So that's a lazy man's flag. And then let's get our multi-purpose glue again and put that on the card. And let's put that about there. And then we can add a bird or humming bird. Not a humming bird. A dragonfly or a bird. Do the same one. I'm really soaring. Okay, so now let's see how our fence does opening it up. So see now you can open the fence better with that score. So that's just an idea for that card. And one more card to finish these three is using that piece that we cut off, the sky that we cut off the top. So I have another very vanilla card base. Let me feel, it's pretty even, but I think that way. I have a balmy blue four and one eighth by five and three eighths embossed with the <clears throat> exposed brick 3D embossing folder. This is a very vanilla uh, stitch circle, the largest one from the stylish shapes. And then I have a pre-colored wheelbarrow and some boots. So let's get to putting everything on. Now in my previous card, let me see if I can find it. 
Here's the one I did in white, and you can tell me which one you like better. I kind of like the white on this look, but I'm going to go with Very Vanilla. I'm also going to put a Very Vanilla panel on this piece to give it some separation. I told you, I like to make the cards better the second time I make them. So I just see some things that I'm like, oh, you know what, that would look better if it was bordered. So let me pick this up, put this on here, get it centered, smoosh the glue around. Add glue on my mat again. And then let's just trim this to the same length as that. I didn't get it, did I? Okay, there. Now we can adhere this to the left hand side of the balmy blue panel. Okay, and then to our card base. It's been a dreary day. We're supposed to get rain this week for a couple of days, which is good. I never try to complain about rain too much because when you don't have rain for a long time, it's not good either. So. We'll take what we can get when we can get it. <laughs> Whoops. I told you I got my map sticky. Okay, so there is that. So how I do this, I don't think I've done one yet. Is I did the, there's a little stamp. It's kind of like a little dirt patch. So I'm going to get a piece of scrap paper, which I think I've already done and I'm going to get the pecan pie ink pad out <clears throat> as soon as I finish this card I'm going to clean up my space so, so I can see everything I got a bunch of stuff out with the last couple cards I'm going to do these closer together I don't have to fill in I should have done the birthday first because now I have to worry about getting it straight. Okay, so let's do the birthday and we'll do it again in black. I get here I can see pretty much as far up as I can get it. That'll work. And now my pre-colored wheelbarrow. So again, I used gray granite here. I actually used a Sharpie for the black. And then I have light mossy meadow, the petal pink, and a light balmy blue to co coordinate with these colors. So here that on there. And there's the boots. Now, one thing I don't like when you color the vanilla with the light balmy blue, it's not quite as brilliant as that. So you decide which one you like that one, whether you like it on white or vanilla, but I just show you both. And then my ribbon saving technique again. So I just take a little loop, cut it. And then I make three little flag ends. My kitty is all over the place in my room. I need to show you my kitty. He is a handsome boy, um, but he's a mess sometimes. He, he actually stays up here in my craft room 
with me. He has his own little chair, although right now he's being mischievous. One of these days, if I get brave and go live, that would be a good time and have a front facing camera where you can see me too. And I'll pick up Kitty and you can see him. His name is Coco. He's a Himalayan Persian seal point. So he, he's real pretty. All right, let's put that on there. So I'll put that on there like that. And then I kind of follow the direction of my ribbon, like it's a whole piece. Okay, so that's my ribbon saving technique and it helps me get it right where I want it. Okay, so let's put this on with dimensionals. So you guys like, are you guys, anybody making these cards um, after I finish? Okay, so here is the very vanilla one and here is white. And I will go back and add some rhinestone jewels or those are the iridescent rhinestone jewels or something like that. All right, so let's pick up everything. Put these cards in their piles. And we have one more DSP to work with. Get all my little sleeves together. Yeah, I have pre-cut stuff. <laughs> okay. Did I leave off a sentiment? Why do I have an extra, is it the extra hello I did? And then I did happy birthdays? Probably. I'm going to set that aside. I might need it later. Okay, I think I'm all cleaned up. So let's do let's do this piece. Okay, so this one uses this piece of DSP. And we're going to be making the window opening again. Now, I have pre-done one. Um, so the easiest way that I showed on, well, I showed on my first video how to cut this out and get it straight. So refer back to that and you, um, because it, otherwise you'll have crooked window openings. So um, I think that's the best way I've found to do that. I'm looking at my cards here on the side. So let's cut this DSP to, so I do measure like the opening of the window. Also, I should write that down because I forget every time. Where's my ruler? I'll just use the grid paper. So it needs to be like four and a half. Let's get out my trimmer. And do four and a half. And I have to decide where I want to cut it. This one I think I cut down, but I'm going to go ahead and just use the whole thing right here. So four and a half. And then let's cut this right in the middle at three. I showed also in my first video how, I mean, at three inches, these just barely fit in the window. So I'm going to set this here so I don't lose it. All right, so for the first card, we're gonna uh, just put it on a Mossy Meadow piece. Again, this is Mossy Meadow embossed with the exposed brick embossing folder. It's four and an eighth by five and three eighths to show a little bit of white border. Let's secure that down. I don't think I cut my mat for the paper. So this would be a simple card if you didn't even have the dies and you just love the stamp set and the paper. Well, I can't want to put a fence on there. So then you would need the die, but you wouldn't have to put a fence. Okay, and then 
We need a vanilla layer for this. So let me get out some very vanilla. This is where I need my assistant again. <laughs> okay, so this was a four and a half by three. So we need three and a quarter by four point seven five. Yep. Okay, four point seven five. I don't know if it's scoring day. By three and a quarter. I think I did the other one at an eighth, but I'm just going to make this one a little bit bigger. Quarter. Yeah, I like that bigger border. All right, Tombow Multi Purpose Glue. I do love the back of this paper. That might even be pretty just to put on there. But I'm going to stick with the scenery. Center that up. Okay, and then, well, I did a boo-boo. So I was supposed to attach, let's see if I can look it up. I can look it up a little bit. I was supposed to put ribbon underneath here, so we're going to cheat and try to stick it under there. So I just cut a little piece, all right, and then I'm going to try to stick some tear and tape in there. I always have a hard time finding the start. Okay, I could put a paper clip or something there. All right, so let's put a piece of tear and tape inside the card. <laughs> As I said, there are no mistakes in card making. Uh, showing you kind of how to fix stuff if it goes wrong. All right, and I want the center of the card. Oops. So that right there. Press that down. And then lift up this side. So the tear and tape will help it stick back down. Should put that on the green, shouldn't I? Okay. Pull that around. And press. Okay. Card saved. Or it just wouldn't have had ribbon. Okay, and then we're gonna put this up on dimensionals as well on there. There's some scrap. The edges of some dimensional. Use every bit of it. And I do need some for the center. Right. So I just put six pieces on there, which is actually just basically three whole big dimensionals. So getting a little scrap pile over here on my side. Okay. So I think that in itself is pretty, very easy. Um, I can use that hello. Um, I think on the other one, I stamped it in Mossy Meadow, I did, but I'm gonna use black because I don't have one cut and so I don't want you to wait. Then also I'm gonna put a fence on him. And again, I used my tear and tape as like an adhesive sheet. Can you see the white on the yellow? Probably not. I'm just gonna tear that off. All right, and let's put that down at the bottom. 
and then I did a little basket. Now, here's the basket. So I use a lot of the same colors, like the Melon Mambo and the Fresh Freesia. I'm just going to set him on the edge here. Actually, if I put my sentiment, this one I kind of put down low in the trees. I think I'll, I'll, do, I'll keep it the same. I'll put it over here, off to the side. And let's put the hello on there. And then, of course, we need a bird. Let's put him coming into the thing, this one up at the top. Okay, so another card complete. Here was my first one. I did do it in vanilla. What do you, do you like a bigger border, smaller border? My ribbon's a little crooked. <laughs> That's not good. So there's that card. All right, now the second card, we're going to do the window. And again, refer to my um, first video of how to cut this straight. So, and as you can see, it just barely fits in the seam there. So I have a very vanilla card base. And this is where I was talking about your embossing folder. So the stitching, when you cut it out, you can tell kind of which one is the top and which is the bottom. So when you go to emboss this with your 3D exposed brick embossing folder, you're going to want to put this upside down, okay, because then your brick will be up and your mortar will be in, if that makes any sense to you. So uh, put it upside down. And by the way, you know this line helps you keep it straight as well. So you want to put your paper in upside down if you like your brick that way. It really doesn't make a difference. It would just look like this versus that, if, if you can see that. Oops, I don't want that on wood. I want this down. So as I showed in my other videos, some of them I ran this through the window die as well. And it just barely fits. Literally the edge, I don't even think it cuts out. It would just cut the corners in the bottom. But here's how I do when I just want the seam. Because I'm going to put that down like that. Lift it up. Add some glue. Lift this side up. Add some glue. And then we're going to put this thing on dimensionals. Now it would look fine not on dimensionals. Um, then you wouldn't be able to see the sides if you actually peek through the side of that. I lost my little cover. <laughs> so I'll put it up to find it. It's probably in the floor. So let's get our dimensionals out. This one uses lots of dimensionals because you don't want it to sink anywhere. So you want to be very generous with your dimensional on the frame. I should have put these on there ahead of time. I think we're doing okay in time. But, I'm, you know what, I may, because I want to get to the other cards. So you're going to finish putting that on dimensionals like that. And where's my sample? Nowhere to be seen. Okay, well, we're going to put that on there like that. Hold on, I got my... Oh, I do have some additional labels. And then I would put this... My basket turned over here on my other card. When I get it up on dimensionals, then I'm going to put a little flower in the corner. And then I'll put a sentiment in the sky and add a bird, and we'll be all done. So um, that is how to make this card. And again, just for speed, I'm going to go on to the next card so I don't go over an hour. Okay. Put those, clean this space up a little bit. And we'll get to our last card. So for this one, you're going to want to use this piece of designer series paper. And we're going to make two cards again. 
And I already have some stuff pre-cut, but I'm going to show you when you cut this. We're going to make a full panel card like this. Now this I use Garden Green, and to help with the supplies, I switched to Mossy Meadow because one, there's not a Garden Green blend. Or last I checked, if there is one, someone tell me because I would love to get one with my glue. <laughs> and so when I cut this, I'm going to want to cut from the sky to leave as much as the pretty flowers here as possible. So we want to cut this, this one at four inches. I'm just going to cut it at four to start with. Because my next one I want long. Four. And then um, we're going to want it five and a quarter tall. So I'm going to cut from the sky. And again, you can save this for like a sentiment little piece or something. Yeah, on the, uh, excuse me, on the previous card, I didn't use this except, um, I think I lined, put this on an envelope inside it. Just trim it down and you can slip it in the envelope to give a little decoration. Or if you wanted to make a separate card with that. But um, just thought I'd share what I did with that as well. All right, so we're going to make a card out of this and a card out of this. So I have already glued one on some Mossy Meadow. So you can see what it's like. And I also pre-stamped this sentiment. And that's from the Faith and Courage stamp set. It's one of my favorites. Um, or Courage and Faith. One of those. This one right here. And it's stamped on a Nested Essentials die. So that's what we're going to put there. And I'm going to do my ribbon saving technique. This one's a little trickier with the angle of the, of the, of the label. Oh, that's not my, you see that didn't even cut. Paper will dull your scissors. So I try to save one pair just for ribbon cutting. All right, let's get our tear and tape again. I scooted my, or something scooted there. It was not straight. It doesn't look straight on the camera now either, does it? Put it back down. <laughs> I think that looks better. All right, some down there. Some down here. Fill that up. You guys like this ribbon saving technique? It, it helps me get it on there right where I want it to. So it just may not save a whole lot of ribbon, and that needs to go closer if it's going to come out down here. It's got my little strips. there and then I like the flags going together for the angle like that. All right, so let's put that on dimensionals. These cards actually go together faster than it looks like on my videos. The most detailed part is coloring all the little wheelbarrows and flower patches, but that's kind of fun. And I really didn't mess with blending, uh, doing shade variation, because the flowers are so small. I just did one flower in the dark, one in the light. All right, so you can decide. Do you want it over here and show that? I'm going to switch this one up, and let's put this one on this side. Just for something different. And then I don't see, I did put a little colored flower pad. Let's see if I have one. I have a little folder of pre colored stuff or pre stamp. It's going to be pre colored. I 
And of course, it's not in my bucket. So anyway, I'll add a little flower patch and a little bird. I can do the bird now. Let's see, let's do him going away since he's on this side. And that is that card. So for the next card, I really <laughs> pre-did stuff. So I'm going to speed this along and just show you because we're getting close to our hour mark. So I did a piece of balmy blue. Again, four and one eighth by five and three eighths. I took this and did it like I did much of the other cards like that. And then I did the same wheelbarrow technique where I did some grounding. I colored the wheelbarrow with gray granite, fresh freesia, balmy blue, stamped my happy birthday, did the wheels with a Sharpie actually. And then I have the little gardening tool and We'll put that up on dimensionals, much like that. And here is my white one. And I'll do the same ribbon saving technique around the circle. So those are our six cards for today. And so we have 12 more to go. <laughs> so thanks for joining me today. I hope you're enjoying these cards. I really appreciate your comments. Share the best compliment you can give me is to share this video. Give me a thumbs up. And until my next video, you guys have a great day. And probably my next video will be a paper pumpkin alternative that I've been working up as well. So, and then I'll get to the next set of these. So lots of videos this week. Enjoy your day. Bye-bye.